so, uh... Oh, I have to lower this. Um, so as I said, that uh, really even uh, angular magnification is uh, more useful when we use optical instruments to characterize this instrument that, than linear uh, uh, magnification. We, we use linear magnification mainly with, if we want uh, in situations indeed like, like the one which uh, we discussed yesterday, that we wanted to project uh, a slide on the screen. So over there we were interested in uh, linear magnifications, which is referred only as magnification. Now, but if we use an instrument to observe, uh, or to magnify objects which we want to observe, then uh, angular magnification is much more useful. And uh, <coughs> as an example, let's take a look how uh, a magnifying glass works and what kind of magnification we can expect from a, uh, from a magnifying glass. Um, in a, if, we do, if we do not have magnifying glass, that the most favorable, because when, whenever we actually talk about angular magnification, we try to compare angle uh, at which we observe object through the optical instrument with the most favorable uh, configuration without uh, uh, any instrument. Well, now think about what is the most favorable configuration to look, let's say, at text uh, f uh, without uh, magnifying glass. How would, where would you put the book? Where? Uh, I can't hear you. Of the eye? Well, uh, right now we have only the eye lens. Yeah? So if I look at this, at this text, where, is, where should I put the text so that I see, or a page, so that I see as many details as I, as I can? The most favorable location of the page. At what location? Center of what? Well, d don't you remember what I said the focal point of an eye is? Well, it's variable, but it varies in what range? Focal point has to be, uh, f focal point is closer to the lens, eye lens than retina. It is just two centimeters with something away. So saying that the, that the most favorable uh, location for page to, to read it is at the focal point, it means to put it like that, about two point, two and a half centimeters away from, from the lens. Now, who is going to read the page like that? Not, I mean, it would be very, it would have to be very nearsighted person. Uh, and uh, we, we won't be able to read that. Actually, if we were able to read it that way, we would see it indeed much better. Problem is that we cannot focus our eyes on the object that close. So, uh, okay, so where should, we, where should we put it? The object, in order to, the, the most favorable, that way? No, my sister had this problem, right? Because I mean, it was, <coughs> She became farsighted and she had to put it this way. And then she couldn't read because text appeared to be uh, too small. Okay, thanks. Well, we should place it around near point of the person, near point of, of, of the eye, about the, this far. Um, so the most, most favorable location for the object without, oh actually it is already on the screen. In order to see it best, most details, 
we would have to place the object uh, close, uh, well, at the distance approximately equal to the near point. And <coughs> actually, if uh, uh, Sherlock Holmes looks at the details without uh, magnifying glass, it, this is how he would look at that. I mean, if, if there is some kind of detail over there, over there, he would try to do it like this without glass. And actually, I think he did it on the movie. Yeah, something. Right? <coughs> uh, <coughs> All right. So let's say that object has a particular dimension, a particular size. So let's say that it has size h. And let's see in what angle we would see it if we didn't need the, uh, the uh, uh, magnifying, uh, I mean, without anything. This is the angle in which we would see it. Uh, now, how big is this angle? And usually it is that, uh, that when we look at objects, they are in a relatively small angles. And there is something simple about two trigonometric functions, tangent of, uh, tangent of, of a small angle and sine of se small angle, that for small angles, they are equal to the argument in expressing radians. So actually this angle, uh, tangent of this angle, is equal to height of the object divided by the length uh, distance from the eye to the object. Uh, oh, uh, however, tangent of, of this angle, if its angle is small, is approximately equal to that angle. All right, so we know how to determine this angle if we don't use a magnifying glass. Now, uh, I went and brought a magnifying glass, and so now I can even look at this. Uh, um, to, to illustrate how to we supposed to use it. So, if you want to see as, po uh, uh, as many details as possible, we should put the glass close to our eye and then place the location of the page where? Well, a near point, I, I, I mean, where's my near point? All right, this is, this is my near point. Uh, yeah, so I have to place, it, pla place my eye at this distance to see it properly. Now, if I, put a gl uh, if I place glass over here, I can bring it closer. Yeah, I can see it really from this distance. Um, <coughs> actually, so, so actually you saw that I, I was able to place the page closer than a near point. Why? Because now when I look through the magnifying glass, I'm not looking at the object itself. What am I looking at through the magnifying glass? At the image produced by the magnifying glass. And I, so my eye doesn't have to focus now on the object, it has to focus on the image produced by the magnifying glass. Well, so uh, when, am I going uh, when am I going to be able to do it? When the image is at, at least at the near point or further. The image has to be between near point and far point. Then I will be able to, uh, to focus my eye. So if we use magnifying glass, I can bring object closer to the eye and I can bring it as close I mean, cannot bring it closer if the image, I mean, I have to make sure that the image is produced at the light, right location. So I can bring it to such a location that the image is formed at the near point. Well, in what angle do I see the object now? I mean, really, I see the image. It's this angle. And I can always use chief ray to think about, about the angle. So. Magnification requires that I compare these two angles. All right. <coughs> so 
let's say that I have that image is at location S. I can recognize now that uh, this angle, or precisely it will be tangent of this angle, is, is equal to height of the image <coughs> divided by distance from the <coughs> from the eye to that to that image, which is approximately equal to the uh, uh, distance to the near point. So it is the uh, size of the image <coughs> divided by distance to the near point. Uh, <coughs> now, I can <coughs> I can actually recognize that these two triangles, this triangle and this triangle, are similar. So I, uh, I can use a proportion. This uh, height over this height is equal to this distance over this distance. So I can, uh, I can express the height of the image by the height of the object and ratio of the distances of the, <coughs> of the two from the eye. Uh, that way, um, distance to the near point cancels. Uh, actually, I didn't do anything here, right? H over, yeah, so I just copied this expression. And, <coughs> and now I also recognize, oh, I uh, left it, actually. Uh, now, what did I, yeah, that H, which is height of the object, uh, divided by the distance to the near point gives me tangent of this angle. And tangent of this angle is approximately equal to that angle. So that quotient is really equal to the, to the angle in which, we, ob in which uh, uh, we would observe the object without the magnifying glass. So what is the magnification then? Uh, I mean, angular magnification. I have to divide both sides by, uh, by this angle. So I can recognize that angular magnification is equal to the ratio of the distance to the near point of the eye over the distance at which we can place the object with the magnifying glass. So how about if you now try to estimate just looking at me from you, from from wherever you are how much bigger image I'm going to see through the magnifying glass without magnifying glass I can see it now all right so observe me and now I'm going to use the magnifying glass And now I see it right. How many times the magnifying glass increased the angle in which I saw the object? About three times. How, do you, how, uh, how Adam figured it out? Because without glass, I have to put, I have to place the object at a distance of about 30 centimeters. Now when I put a glass, I can bring it to 10 centimeters, right? So it means that, th that it magnified uh, three, uh, three times. Um, actually, <coughs> if we were able, because we don't necessarily have to use a magnifying uh, glass to uh, to bring the object closer. If you make a tiny hole in a, in a, in piece in piece of paper, um, something like this. <coughs> and well, because if I if I uh, uh, decrease the the uh, size through which of the lens through which the uh, uh, light can pass through and we call this an aperture and the, the size uh, 
normally actually you can recognize what is the aperture of your, of your eye because that black spot on your eye says how wide is the opening. And, pa um, and probably you notice that uh, when you drive your car, I mean particularly those of you who, who, who don't have uh, sharp vision, that if you drive your car during the day, the picture is uh, more in focus than when you drive it uh, when it is dark. Have you noticed that? That in darkness actually we lose the focus. And the reason for it is that in the darkness we have to open the pupil of the eye in order to collect more light. Uh, at, at the same time, we uh, lose something which is referred to as depth of focus. Um, so, by making a tiny hole in a piece of paper and bringing it uh, close to the eye, I suppress my body to adjust the aperture of the eye. Now that hole makes the size of the of the eye. Now, however, now I can bring the that other paper this close to see this time I look directly at the object to see the object uh, and it is in, in focus so right now I see it as big as through the magnifying glass um, you don't have to do this experiment right now but uh, uh, try to do it home and you will see that a, a pinhole works like a magnifying glass all right, now <coughs> let's take a look at some other arrangement of, uh, of uh, optical elements uh, which we can assemble to create uh, images which are bigger than the images, th than the objects themselves, so that we can see details on those. Well, the first one is a compound microscope. Look. And, uh, well, all optical. <coughs> instruments uh, <coughs> operate actually, you know, I mean those which we use to, to, to observe things, uh, so things like binoculars, uh, Keplerian telescope, Newtonian telescope, microscope, they all operate at the same principle. They use magnifying glass. Eyepiece is always a magnifying glass. It operates exactly like a magnifying glass. However, uh, we don't look directly at the object, but we look at the image produced by the objective. So, objective, and whenever we look uh, through an optical instrument, we look, the objective creates an image at the location where you were supposed to put it in front of a magnifying glass, and then eyepiece has a function of a magnifying glass. So, let's take a look at this, how a microscope works. So let's say that here we have a specimen. So, objective produces the first image. And in a microscope, since <coughs> we look at the objects which we can carry around, we place uh, the object in such a location with respect to the objective that objective makes an image which is bigger than the specimen itself. So, uh, the objective itself magnifies. We have a linear magnification due to objective. Now, eyepiece works like a magnifying glass and we look at this object now. The image formed by the objective is the object for the eyepiece. And then we produce the magnified image of the image produced by the objective. Now, where this image has to be? Can I have this final image, let's say, over there? Why not? 
well, how, I mean, how about, how about here? Can I have the final image over here? And why? Yeah, the answer is no. I mean, if we could, we would have it. Uh, uh, why we couldn't have it? Because it's too close to the eye. We would not be able to focus on it. We have to place the image, the final image, not closer than the near point. The final image has to be between near point and far point of the eye. And actually, no matter where it is, uh, we, uh, we would see it in the same angle. And be because the angle in which we see this uh, final image is determined by the chief ray and the principal axis of the eyepiece. This is the angle at which we see the final image. So no matter if it is at the near point of, or at infinity, we will always see uh, at the same angle. And, <coughs> and actually, if we do not use two eyes, we, co we couldn't recognize how far it is. We only we recognize how far objects are because we have two eyes and we use a, 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 a phenomenon which is called parallax, but it's, it's a digression. All right, let's now try to evaluate what kind of magnification we get in a microscope uh, if, uh, depending on this, what kind of uh, lenses we have. And, uh, well, we are interested more in that angular uh, magnification although in case of microscope it doesn't matter if we they both are all approximately equal because I can recognize that this angle is equal approximately to tangent of this angle and it's going to be equal to the size of the final image divided by the distance from the eye to this point and this point this point will be approximately near point of the eye. Now, this, without the microscope, we would, this is where we would have to put the, the specimen in order to see it properly. So we will have to put it in the, uh, at the near point of the eye. So that angle is approximately still equal to tangent of the angle and would be size of the specimen divided by the distance to the near point. So, ratio of the angles is approximately equal to the ratio of the, si of the dimensions, which means that angular magnification is approximately equal to magnification. Do you understand me? All right. But I want now to, to, con to concentrate on angular magnification, and actually I, re I prefer that you remember this formula, that the formula from the book, uh, uh, formula, uh, both formulas are approximate, and we will know what kind of approximation we are going to use. Uh, but that one is more intuitive and simpler on top of it. The one which I, which I want you to, uh, uh, to use. All right. So magnification is, by definition, equal to the angle at which we see the final image produced by the microscope divided by the angle in which we would see the specimen in the most favorable configuration. All right, now the, this angle is the angle in which we see the specimen. Now, when we, when we use magnifying glass, uh, the specimen is supposed to be placed very close to the focal point of the, magnif of, of the lens. It is slightly closer than the focal point, but almost at the focal point. So, I can say that the distance from the, from the image produced by the objective to the eyepiece is approximately equal to the focal length of the eyepiece. There, uh, and uh, by H prime, I mark the height of the image uh, produced by the objective. So this gives me angle in which I see the final image. I, r I still recognize that I have two similar triangles here. This one 
and this one. These two triangles are similar, so tangent of this angle could I could take it that this is height of the final uh, image divided by this distance, but it is also equal to height of the image formed by the objective divided by the distance of uh, the image produced by the objective from the eyepiece. Now let's take a look at the uh, angle in which we would see the specimen. Um, so it will be height of the specimen divided by what, what distance? The most favorable location of the specimen distance to the most favorable location. What would be that, uh, that distance? It will be distance to the near point. Now, have you seen uh, microscopes? Uh, <coughs> how long are they? Optical microscopes. This long? No. This long? about this long, right? Which means that, that it is approximately equal to the distance to the, uh, to the near point. Yeah, because in order to see the specimen in the most favorable configuration, we would have to put it at the near point. It happens to be approximately equal to the length of the microscope. And actually, if you, if you move the slide from, from underneath the microscope, you can still do you, rec do you recall, I mean, probably all of you have used a microscope, that you can look at the specimen. You can focus on that slide. And then you, you put it in uh, and, and see through the microscope a magnified uh, uh, image. All right. Uh, now, <coughs> I will try to manipulate this, uh, uh, these uh, formulas in such a way that uh, in order to get rid of of the dimensions of the uh, of the specimen and the image produced by the first uh, lens. Well, I can recognize now that these two triangles are also sim uh, similar. This one and this one. Which means that ratio of the height of the specimen divided by the distance from the objective to the specimen is equal to the uh, height of the image produced by the specimen divided by the distance from the specimen to the objective. Now when we design microscope, we design, we design it in such a way that this image is produced very close to the, to the lens. So actually this distance, I mean on the drawing it is not at ov as obvious, but this distance over here ap is approximately equal to the length of the microscope. Uh, now, uh, how did I do over here? Hold on. Um, so I left this one like it was. I copied focal length of the eyepiece. All right, and uh, I express now h prime, which is this height, by this height, and approximate ratio of the two distances: this one and this this one. Now, I said that this one is approximately equal to the length of the microscope and uh, this one is very close to the focal length of the objective. So, th because of that, I'm getting now length of the microscope and focal length of the objective. And so, if I multiply this uh, height by ratio of this distance over this distance, I will get height of the image. And I got, right, and so, so I substituted this height of the image, and I can cancel height of the image and get magnification for the microscope. Approximate magnification of the microscope depends on the focal length of both objective and the eyepiece and square of the length of the microscope. All right, now let's take a look at another optical instrument, a Keplerian uh, telescope. Keplerian telescope, it also has objective and eyepiece. 
and uh, objective creates an image in front of the eyepiece and eyepiece is used the same way as a magnifying glass so well however objective I mean, as we can see from this diagram objective creates a smaller image than the object itself uh, <coughs> could we now make it so that that it's bigger why because it is kind of disadvantage that the image formed by the objective because in the microscope we really made objective in such a way that it produced an image as big as possible uh, why we cannot why we don't do it in the Keplerian telescope Yeah, Andrew? So what? This is not the reason. Actually, Keplerian telescope is also very often used to, to observe. Well, Kepler, you know uh, what he uh, 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 used it for. What did he use it for? Uh, to look at the sky. Yeah, so why, why actually he didn't invent a telescope so that the image produced by the objective is bigger? Well, because in order to obtain a bigger image, where would you have to place the object? With the microscope it was possible, because with the microscope we were looking at tiny objects which, were, which we were able to carry to carry around so we could place it wherever we wanted it now here the problem is well how to move Mars close to the objective we can't uh, so we are looking with with a Keplerian telescope we look at the distance of ob objects to which we cannot get closer because I mean really uh, looking at the tree is not the best way uh, uh, of using Keplerian telescope if you want to see details on a tree we just can walk to the tree uh, however we cannot walk toward Mars Jupiter or whatever uh, <coughs> all right so objective produces an image and approximately try to figure out where it produces the image when we are looking at an object which is far far away uh, approximately at infinity well, so if an object is at infinity where the image is formed, if we look at the lens equation, we will have 1 over infinity plus 1 over uh, position of the image is supposed to be equal to 1 over focal length of the uh, objective, which means that the image is formed approximately at the focal point of the objective. Can you, do you understand it? All right. Now eyepiece again works like a magnifying glass and I marked actually only, I didn't mark uh, the entire diagram but just the uh, chief ray. I know that the image has to be produced somewhere, I mean the image of the top of the tree has to be produced somewhere along this chief ray and it doesn't matter really where. Uh, as long as we can focus on that image and when we can focus of the on that on that final image when it is produced between the near point of the eye and far point of the eye for a normal person actually we can we can assume that that image is even produced at the same location as the initial object all right let's now try to find magnification uh, of uh, such a system so we have to compare angle <coughs> at which we see the final image with the angle at which we would see the object at the most favorable configuration. Now most favorable configuration unfortunately is that that object is still far far away. I cannot bring Mars close to, closer to my eye. So it has to be where, where it is. All right, so let's now take a look at what angle we observe this one. And we can 
recognize actually that this triangle is similar to this triangle. So that angle theta prime is actually height of the image produced by the uh, objective <coughs> divided by the distance from the eyepiece to, the, to that image produced by the objective. And the image is supposed to produce the, uh, sorry, the objective is supposed to produce the image very close to the focal point of the eyepiece. So approximately I can write down that it's height of that image produced by the objective divided by the uh, by focal length of the eyepiece. Now, how do we, how would we see, uh, at what angle would we see the uh, uh <coughs> object without uh, the, uh, the, the telescope? I can imagine that actually that I have my eye over here. Because length of the telescope is usually very small compared to the distance from you to the object which you observe. So it doesn't matter if you move forward half a meter or not. Which means that this angle is the angle at which we would observe object without the telescope. So it's this height divided by this distance. I can recognize now that these two triangles are similar so it's also height of this image divided by the distance of the image to the objective. Now the image is formed almost at the focal point of the objective, so this distance is focal length. So I can write down that this is h prime divided by the focal length of the objective. So if I perform the operation, I will get that angular magnification is proportional to the focal length of the objective and inversely proportional to the focal length of the uh, of the eyepiece. Now the minus sign says that, that the image is inverted. So how telescopes are built? We have two. I mean think what kind of lenses we would, we would uh, need to use. If I, if I use two identical lenses, how strong would be this telescope? What would be the magnification of a telescope? of a telescope which has objective and eyepiece of the same focal with the same focal length one right, precisely minus one all right so how good is this telescope it's not good with telescope i would see the image on the telescope would only invert the image but it would not magnify uh, 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 the images so <coughs> how, how to make it so, it so that it magnifies? <coughs> Adam, would you like to comment? Anybody? It's not uh, O stands now for objective. Yes, sir. Uh, and uh, Adam suggested that uh, focal length of the objective has to be large. The larger, uh, uh, the larger focal length of the objective, the higher magnification we get. How about uh, uh, focal length of the eyepiece? We want focal length of the eyepiece to the small. So how about if we take, for example, <coughs> that focal length of the objective is one kilometer and focal length of the eyepiece, let's say, will be one centimeter. What would be the magnification of this telescope? 10,000. Uh, no, uh, 100,000. 100,000 times. However, we don't have such a telescope. Why not? <coughs> well, 
Take a look at the length of the telescope. Compare length of the telescope with the focal length of the objective. Which one is... How they compare? They are almost equal. Right. So the, the length of the telescope is approximately equal to the focal length of the objective. So if I wanted to have an objective which, is one, which has focal length of one kilometer, it means that I will have to take a telescope which is one kilometer long. How are we going to carry it around? Uh, now, have you seen telescopes? I mean, these telescopes, uh, uh, which have two lenses. Uh, you can even probably get them in, a, in a, uh, hardware stores uh, as, a, as toys. How long are they? Y yes, Brian? About a meter, about this long. Right. Yes, yeah, so let's say that <coughs> it's, it means that the focal length of the objective of the order of one meter is reasonable. Uh, if I take now an eyepiece which has focal length of one centimeter, what would be magnification of such a telescope? About a hundred. All right. Uh, and this is a reasonable, uh, reasonable telescope. Um, <coughs> well, actually, I intended that, that we design, a, uh, design an optical instrument, but I don't have enough time, so we will do it tomorrow. However, you can think about it. Yeah, because what is the disadvantage of using Keplerian telescope to, to look at objects on around. The disadvantage is that it inverts the final image. So you would see things upside down. And actually, if you go to a, to a um, toy store where you, see teles where you can see telescopes, you would recognize that they invert the, uh, the image. Well, if you look at uh, Saturn or Jupiter, it doesn't matter which way you look at that. I mean, a few, few hours later, it is going to turn around anyway. However, <coughs> if we want to spot birds, this one is not good. Because all birds would be upside down. What do we use to observe birds? Binoculars, correct. So I was thinking that we can figure out how to design binoculars, but uh, have, uh, since... Uh, uh, the time is over. Why don't you think in the meantime and tomorrow maybe I will ask somebody to the whiteboard to, 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 to uh, uh, show their design of, uh, of binoculars. Now before you actually go and Google it out I suggest that you really think how to do it and the best way is to, to imagine uh, to, to draw ray diagram. Let me even give you a hint. Uh, so, <coughs> it, all, it will also have objective and eyepiece. Now, however, what you want to, s to, to see well, uh, is that you have to use such an eyepiece that the final image is, in, is oriented in the same direction as the object. So, so draw a ray diagram assuming that this one is up. Figure out where would you have to put the eyepiece and what type of an eyepiece to get uh, such, a, such an optical instrument. All right, thank you very much.